Hi, I'm Rupanjan Bhattacharya. As a 10th grade student striving to elucidate the concept of covalent bonding, when the elements do not differ much in their electronegativities, transfer of electrons is not possible between atoms. In this case, sharing of electrons takes place. Such bonds which are formed by the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms are known as covalent bonds. Covalently bonded molecules are seen to have strong bonds within the molecule. But intermolecular forces are small. This gives rise to the low melting and boiling points of these compounds. Since the electrons are shared between atoms and no charged particles are formed, such covalent compounds are generally poor conductors of electricity. The types of covalent bonds are Nonpolar covalent bond In a bond between two identical atoms, the electrons are shared equally between the atoms. No separation of charge take place in the molecule. This type of bond is called nonpolar covalent bond. Polar covalent bond is formed between non-identical atoms, which differ in electronegativities. Since the two atoms differ in their capacity to attract the shared electron pair, unequal sharing of electron density result. As a result, polarity is developed in the bond and the bond is sent to a dipole moment. Dipole moment is the quantitative measure of the polarity of the molecule. A slight ionic corrector is imparted to this type of bond due to the difference in electronegativity between the bonded atoms and such type of bond is called polar covalent bond. Ionic bonds are associated with some covalent character due to the attractive forces acting between the cation and electron cloud of the anion. During the formation of an ionic compound, when a cation and anion approach each other the nucleus of caption exerts some attractive force on the electron cloud. As a result of this the symmetry of the electron cloud gets distorted and it shifts slightly towards the cation. This phenomenon is called polarization. This ability of a caption to distort the electron cloud of the anion is called polarizing power of the cation and the tendency of the anion to get distorted by the influence of the cation is called the polarizability of the anion. The relative proportional of ionic and covalent characters of an ionic compound depend upon the polarizing power and polarizability of the respective cation and anion that can be explained on the basis of Fajan's rules. 1. Size of cation and anion. A. A large cation and a small anion result in maximum ionic character for the bond. B. A small cation and a large anion result in maximum covalent character for the bond. 2. Charge of cation and anion. A. Low charge on cation and anion results in maximum ionic character for the bond. B. High charge on cation and anion results in greater proportion of covalent character for the bond. Theories of covalent bond formation. The octet rule. It states that the atoms of the elements have a tendency to attain the nearest inert gas configuration either by the transfer of electrons or by the sharing of electrons. Some examples of covalent molecules are demonstrated with their Lewis dot structures. Hydrogen Oxygen Nitrogen Chlorine Water Methane Concept of orbital overlapping According to this concept, covalent bond is formed when an overlap takes place between the orbital of one atom with the orbital of another atom. Condition required for orbital overlapping 1. The orbitals belonging to the valence shall only take an overlapping. 2. Each of the overlapping orbitals should contain an unpaired electron. 3. The electrons in the overlapping orbitals should have an opposite spin. One. SS overlapping. Example: hydrogen molecule. Each hydrogen atom has only one electron, 1s1, that is available for bonding. In the formidant of H2 molecules, this orbital of one atom overlaps with that of the other, forming a single covalent bond. 2s p overlapping example hydrogen fluoride molecule 
It is formed by the overlapping of one's orbital of hydrogen atom and two PC orbital of fluorine atom, that is, by SP overlapping, three PP overlapping. Example, chlorine, fluorine, bromine. Molecule is formed by the overlapping of three PC orbitals of two chlorine atoms. The strength of a covalent bond is related to the extent to which the two combining atomic orbitals can overlap. Sigma bond is a covalent bond formed as a result of maximum overlapping, end-to-end -end overlapping, of SS, SP and PP orbitals along the internuclear axes. Due to the greater extent of overlapping, this type of overlapping result in a strong bond. A covalent bond formed between two atoms by lateral overlapping of orbitals perpendicular to the internuclear axis is called a pi bond. Due to the less extent of overlapping, this type of overlapping result in a weak bond. Sigma bond has an independent existence. Pi bond does not have any independent existence as it can be formed only after the formation of a sigma bond. Sigma bond dissociation energy is high. Pi bond dissociation energy is low. Orbitals S, P and D are capable of forming this type of bond. Orbitals other than S are capable of forming a pi bond. Postulates of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory 1. Different geometrical shapes of the covalent molecules are generated due to the repulsion between the electron pairs present in the valence shell of the central atom of the molecules. 2. These electron pairs arrange themselves in such a way that the repulsion among them becomes minimum. 3. The electron pairs involved in bond formation are called bonded electron pair. The electron pairs which are present in the valence shell of central atom but not involved in bond formation are called lone electron pairs. 4. Repulsion between two lone pairs is greater than the repulsion between a lone pair and a bond pair which is in turn greater than the repulsion between two bond pairs. Therefore the shape of the molecule not only depends on the number of electron pairs but also depends upon the number of bonded electron pairs and lone electron pairs on the central atom in that molecule. Coordinate covalent bond is a special type of covalent bond in which only one of the participating atoms contributes to the electron pair for sharing. The atom that gives the electron pair for sharing is called the donor and the other atom that accommodates the shared pair of electrons is called an acceptor. It is also called a dated bond. In order to explain the identical nature of the bonds, concept of hybridization and hybrid orbitals has come into existence. Hybridization is a process of intermixing of two or more atomic orbitals of almost equal energies belonging to the valence shell of an atom and their redistribution into an equal number of identical orbitals. The resultant orbitals are called hybrid orbitals. Let's watch an animation to clarify this concept. Ethane molecule is ditetrahedral and has a bond angle of 109 degree 28 minutes. Ethene is a planar molecule with a bond angle of 120 degrees while ethene is a linear molecule with a bond angle of 180 degrees. All begin as an example. There are two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms joined by single bonds in this molecule. The orbital picture of ethene looks like this. We can thus visualize seven internuclear axes between them. A chemical bond formed by orbital overlap along the internuclear axis is a sigma bond. Thus, both the carbon atoms are surrounded by three carbon hydrogen sigma bonds and one carbon carbon sigma bond. These bonds are directed along the corners of a regular tetrahedron and all carbon-hydrogen bonds are of the same bond length. Let us now remove the six hydrogen atoms from this structure. 
also drag the two carbon atoms apart. We can clearly see four equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals around each carbon atom. Each of these orbitals has one lobe bigger than the other and is occupied by a single unpaired electron. Now, consider a carbon atom having atomic number 6 in the ground state. Its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz0. On excitation, an electron jumps from the 2s orbital to the 2pz orbital, resulting in an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. In order to form four sigma bonds with other atoms, the 2s, 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals of this atom intermix. This process of intermixing of atomic orbitals is called hybridization. As a result, four equivalent orbitals called sp3 hybrid orbitals directed along the four corners of a regular tetrahedron are formed. When two such sp3 hybridized carbon atoms approach each other along the internuclear axis and overlap, a carbon-carbon sigma bond is formed. This bond has a bond length of 1.54 angstrom. Six hydrogen atoms now approach and overlap the remaining six sp3 hybrid orbitals of both the carbon atoms, forming sigma bonds with bond length of 1.09 angstrom. In other words, whenever a carbon atom in an organic compound forms four sigma bonds which are directed along the corners of a regular tetrahedron, it is sp3 hybridized. Besides sp3 hybridization, the excited carbon atom may also undergo sp2 or sp hybridization. During the formation of a double bond, one 2s and two of the 2p orbitals hybridize. Consequently, this hybridization is termed as sp2 hybridization. The hybridization leads to the formation of three equienergic sp2 hybrid orbitals. As you can see, each sp2 hybrid orbital is bilobed, one lobe bigger than the other. The half-filled p orbital, which was not involved in hybridization, lies at right angles to the plane of the equilateral triangle. Now, let us understand how this hybridized state results in the formation of a double bond. For this, imagine a similar sp2 hybridized carbon atom approaching this carbon atom. As these atoms come closer, an orbital overlap takes place along the internuclear axis. This bond is called a sigma bond. At this stage, the unhybridized p orbitals which lie above and below the plane of the sigma bond also come very close to each other and overlap laterally, resulting in the formation of a pi bond between the two carbon atoms. Thus, there exists one sigma and one pi bond between the two carbon atoms. The other two valencies of each of the carbon atoms are satisfied by four 1s orbitals of hydrogen, hence forming an ethene molecule. Another process of intermixing, called sp hybridization, results in the formation of two sp hybrid orbitals. Now, this carbon atom is ready to combine with other atoms. Imagine another sp hybridized carbon atom approaching this carbon atom, such that the sp hybrid orbitals of the two carbon atoms face each other. These orbitals overlap along the internuclear axis, resulting in a sigma bond. Each of the carbon atoms also has two unhybridized p orbitals namely the PY and PZ orbitals. 
These orbitals, which lie above and below the plane of sigma bond, also come very close to each other and overlap laterally, resulting in the formation of two pi bonds between the two carbon atoms. The fourth valency of each of the carbon atoms is satisfied by two 1s orbitals of hydrogen, which also make sigma bonds along the internuclear axis. The quest of the carbon atom is now complete, and an acetylene molecule is formed. To summarize, we have studied that whenever a carbon atom in an organic compound forms four sigma bonds, directed along the corners of a regular tetrahedron, it is sp3 hybridized. A carbon atom that forms three sigma and a pi bond is sp2 hybridized, while the one in which it forms two sigma and two pi bonds is sp hybridized. Thanks.